Okay, so let's start our this session. Uh, with the development of Kubernetes, security has become um, more and more important. In this upcoming session, Mr. Coty will discuss how to safeguard our Kubernetes cluster using powerful tools. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Coty. Uh, everybody can hear me, right? Yes. yes. Loud and clear. Yes. So, yeah, before I start uh, this presentation, right, uh, like uh, I may need one volunteer who knows, uh, you know, uh, traditional Chinese. Who can we? Uh, can be you? Yeah. So, can you read it for me? Yeah. Okay. Hello. 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 So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Koti. What well, means is Koti. And let, let us to protect Kubernetes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So, that makes some sense, right? So, th this is what we are here for, right? So, today, like, I'll just uh, go back one slide. So, let strengthen, you know, uh, Kubernetes cluster with Minesweeper. What Minesweeper and all, like, we'll uh, get to know in some time. Uh, but first, let's understand. Like, uh, I'll give you a brief intro about me. Uh, myself is Koti Velenki. I'm working as a DevOps engineer for Adobe. Uh, you can see me, and you can uh, at the that is my photo. Okay. So if you want, you can uh, check me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be in uh, very active in LinkedIn, and I'm also started one YouTube channel called No Mem, and that is the link. Uh, so you can write a mail to me anytime on this mail. So these are my contact details. So let's get into uh, the agenda, right? Uh, a simple agenda of connecting three dots. Like many of you heard about the Steve Jobs presentation of connecting three dots, right? So I'm uh, pretty much fan of Steve Jobs, and I try to make something uh, similar to that. So three stories uh, of Costco, KCD Taiwan, and my journey to Taiwan. So let's just uh, understand, right? So when you uh, 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 first time when I heard about Costco, like when I uh, and you know got to know about this open source uh, group of users and community, I wanted to present something related to open source. So that is what I'm going to do today, a open source project. Then comes right. So what I need to present that bring my second question. Like there are a lot of things are open source, like which I need to present. So then uh, going forward. I got to know it's a part. Uh, KCD Taiwan is part of this particular event, and when you say KCD, so we can present something related to Kubernetes. So half of my problem got solved there. So I got the open source project, and I got the Kubernetes to present in KCD. So next comes the my journey to Taiwan. So it will be kind of detailed. I'll go through them, uh, you know, uh, step by step. So uh, throughout the my journey, what has happened. And before that, right? Le let's just uh, understand. Uh, like, before we get into more uh, technical, I made this in a, a beginner-friendly presentation. There won't be lot of you know architecture diagrams that the traditional uh, presentations you see. There won't be not uh, complex archi architectures and the stuff. It will be plain, and uh, try to get as uh, much as possible, right? So after that, uh, we have a surprise. So I'll reveal it later if you are not sleeping by that time. OK? And a final goodbye, right? So <coughs> so security, so lot of, uh, when you say security, uh, I, s I attended a lot of conferences, right? Whenever the security talk uh, is happening, I see uh, no, uh, more than 40 uh, plus age people uh, are speaking. Because they uh, are very uh, have seen a lot of things in their career and lot of uh, things. They implemented a lot of things and they have experienced a lot of things. And you know, somehow we uh, youngsters feel like okay, security is uh, for uh, elder people, right? So I just wanted to understand the basics of security. But uh, what uh, is exactly like you uh, know, uh, is that really that crucial? So let's try to understand in terms of uh, uh, Kubernetes, right? So when we say security, we have a lot of problems, right? Uh, I, uh, how many of you use uh, you Google search on your day-to-day day, -day, day job? Google search? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Okay, I see only on and you may have different browsers, but 
so when i start my journey towards this understanding security problems in you uh, know uh, related to kubernetes i came across these many problems right it's not a simple solution right okay i have a security issue i have one solution it's not like that so then i uh, got to know about let's understand the problems first then we can uh, somehow simulate the uh, solution later so these are my problems right approximately 60% of kubernetes uh, you know security incidents which are happening are just because of the misconfigured uh, you know doc deployments so whatever the yaml you write right if you are more much conscious you know when writing yaml you could you know get over with 60% of the uh, you know security issues and then more than 70% of container images which are running whether it can be a docker image just you know will pull directly just you know with one command docker pull or something but when you're pulling that images the, those are having 70% of vulnerabilities so uh, uh, similarly uh, you have less than uh, whatever the clusters which are out there less than 30% of the clusters have are following cas benchmarks so cas an independent organization just like cosco so they do uh, create some benchmarks hey if you want to create one cluster in co uh, aws you need to have these many ru uh, rules if you are uh, running one cluster in azure you need to follow these kind of rules right so those kind of benchmarks if you uh, are following by less than 30% of the cluster which are out there so this is crucial right like this i can go uh, and uh, dig into it and i just highlighted few there may you might uh, have across lot of other problems right so the problems list is going on somewhere somehow i need to cut it off for the presentation because i have 30 minutes of time so i cut it off uh, till now so uh, now the problem is clear right everybody agree that you know we have a serious problem with uh, uh, securing our cluster so will everybody agree on that or still somebody is sleeping okay <laughs> everybody agree right so security is critical that's what i wanted to you know uh, put it here okay now we understand security is important we know the problems and now what is the solution right so when i uh, started preparing the solutions i came across these articles which are uh, again uh, you can uh, navigate to any of those link so i came across these things right so some of the articles are uh, published by red hat you know uh, the chief that i work at 21 so lot of uh, again i i ran into the same problem when i prepare problems how i am getting lot of list when i started preparing the solution also i am getting lot of this then again i need to cut it off for 30 minutes and i could uh, you know little resources i can uh, search for many right uh, and the conclusion i got here is like uh, these uh, tools are pretty much you know uh, well uh, versed and very much accepted by open source community so what are these tools we'll get, dive into deep in uh, some time right D uh, to give you the overview these are the uh, things we got okay gatekeeper archive or no uh, like policy agents cube safe cube hunter cube bench file code with so all these things then i stopped about uh, thinking about security uh, uh, can i tell you why so i'm a devops engineer I'll have uh, like a minimum 10 tools in my bucket. So every time when I wanted to do one task in my organization, like I need to have a Git, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, this cloud, that cloud. So I need to deal with lot of things, right? Yeah, again, when I start thinking about security, I'm getting these many tools. This is terrible, right? Who and in uh, like how on an earth one individual have these many tools managed, right? So I thought it will be difficult. Let's stop it here and then you uh, know uh, try to do something with what we learned till now right so uh, that comes the uh, thing okay so uh, like i said my journey to taiwan right Let, let's we saw these tools right these six popular tools and i'll try to uh, you know link with my uh, journey to taiwan from india okay let's just understand these tools in that analysis okay so before that right we'll start with gatekeeper so gatekeeper is something okay everybody can hear me right so that is not uh, deviating so that will help uh, uh, if i'm you know diverting from the topic okay let's make sure which topic are we in i need to hear from the audience which topic we are discussing now 
security i thought you will say gatekeeper that will be more relevant right we can see it on screen okay so let's uh, try to um, understand this uh, gatekeeper right so gatekeeper is uh, uh, okay before that i have one more question for you like how many you have you uh, traveled abroad at least once in their life any country okay 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 so uh, if you are not traveled abroad you will learn two things today one is the securing kubernetes cluster and then you will uh, try to uh, i mean you will learn one more process too if you are uh, you not know, traveling to another country so one thing is mandatory right when you are traveling uh, so i'm when i started my journey from india to taiwan the first thing i need to have is visa right taiwan need to give me a permission to enter taiwan to present is this so that permission will call it as uh, visa and gatekeeper also do the same whenever you want to create one resource in your cluster gatekeeper will stop you hey do you have a visa i mean do you have the permission to create a resource we'll call it technically as a admission control so whenever you want to create a pod resource deployment whatever you name it you have it but if you want to have it you need to have a permission from your gatekeeper so there are lot of tools i just mentioned kaivarna uh, which is uh, uh, excessively using for the, by the community and uh, uh, gatekeeper uh, opa gatekeeper also one of the both are cncf incubated projects you can check them out so that is the first thing i want right so this will solve most of the problem we talked about right uh, deployments manner okay so now when i got the visa right uh so visa is like broader view but before i need to uh, you know enter into another country name it as taiwan or any other country i need a passport every country will have a passport right that everybody is aware right everybody will need to have a passport if you want to travel abroad okay so similarly uh, cubesec also as the same right when you say passport it will have a, a set of rules you uh, know come with it Uh, right uh, based on your country and uh, it will have uh, different uh, you know collaborations with other country they will have uh, some will have e visa some will have uh, you know physical visa so something like that cubesec is kind of rule book right so when i say rule book uh, when you give your deployment.ml or pod.ml any sort of resource to cubesec it will scan that uh, you know uh, yaml and will give you the score okay you wanted to create a sample nginx pod so and you are using these are so and so image this has these many criticals based on that it will give you a, a score of 10 so if your score is high then you are good to go if your score is uh, low like 1 or 2 out of 10 it will uh, you know tell you to hey don't proceed with that because it is critical right it is having vulnerabilities and uh, no the score is given a low so it is not good to proceed further right similarly so now uh, yeah these are some technical details i'll share to the presentation later so now we got this uh, visa passport and that's all right now when i uh, have a safe and you know uh, memorable journey in taiwan i need to have a travel guide right who can assist you just like as soon as we went uh, enter taiwan right we are uh, getting uh, this metro maps everywhere so like how can you go from one place to another so like that one travel uh, uh, travel guide if you have it will be very much easy to commute and you know travel right similarly cube hunter so cube hunter is sort of tool uh, it will have lot of information right it will uh, you know do some scans in uh, throughout our cluster by time to time and it will give you information hey if you want to uh, go it this way uh, this is the right way right just like your road map or you know travel guide it will keep on pushing you information right so that is why this is one of the critical tool what uh, to just give you a note whatever the tools i am mentioning right these are all open source you can pull it any time and you can make use of it them any time right so now we have the uh, okay i have the clear picture right now we have the clear picture of like what i need to do like i have a passport visa and i have a travel guide everything but before that i need to make sure that uh, you know i have a valid checklist like what to do so uh, when is the conference so conference is happening on 29 and 30 so i mean uh, two days conference is going on so what are the schedules 
and which uh, schedule I need to attend. Now we are seeing, right, people are shuffling from this room to that room to, you know, uh, going to goodies, food and uh, stuff. So now I need to have some kind of checklist that I need to follow. Right, cube bench also the same. So if you remember when we started discussion, like we said, less than 30% of the clusters which are running are following the CS benchmarks. Cube bench will give you that sort of result. Like when you scan your cluster using cube bench, it will give you, uh, you know, saying that okay, this is uh, this is the recommendation for creating a pod. This is the recommendation creating a deployment. If you are not following, then you will run into an issue. So that kind of warnings will be given through cube bench. Okay. So next comes the Falco. Falco is some sort of like how many of you married? I just wanted to know. Uh, there is some okay. Some people married but don't wanted to disclose. Okay, that is fine. How many of your boyfriends or girlfriends? That is again this is a sensitive question, is it? Okay. So uh, I, the reason I asked you is like Falco is kind of a tool uh, because if you have a uh, you know boyfriend, he's kind of boyfriend. If you have a girlfriend, he's kind of girlfriend. If you are married, uh, it will be a wife or husband. Why I'll tell you. So it is having a watchful eye each and every minute, right? When you cluster, something is happening. One resource getting created, one resource getting deleted, something or the other thing happening. Right, when you are in, in relation or something like that, your families, for example, for that matter, if you're a mother or father, you'll you'll just inform, right? Okay, uh, I'm going there, I'm coming here. So it's kind of that closer look it will have on a cluster, and it will notice everything. Everything means literally everything. It will watch and it will get the updates and you know, uh, give you insights based on that. Okay, for this day, this moment, this thing was happened. Later on time, if you want to, you know, uh, uh, review what will happen, it will give you a detailed list. So that is what Falco will do. Okay. So now, uh, finally, uh, uh, we have one more tool in that uh, list which we have seen called Trivi. Trivi is kind of, you know, uh, if you remember again, if I go to the uh, uh, problem statement, so more than 70% of the images which are running have at least one vulnerability we are telling. How do you come out of it? So we have a trivi here. Trivi kind of, you know, a health inspector. So due to COVID, this pandemic and all, we had lot of struggles, right? Everywhere we saw, now in this room also today, we are seeing people are wearing masks. So this is all about uh, the health check, right? So trivi also do the same. It will do a, you know, sanity uh, check to the extent that your cluster is healthy all the time. Your containers doesn't have, you know, any sort of vulnerabilities, whether it is small, big. It will give you each and every vulnerability. But the highlight of this is it will give you with CVE ID. So, how many of you heard about CVE? Great, great, Isa. So, a uh, CVE is something like, uh, you know, when you have, uh, when you know that vulnerability is there, so there will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, one uh, number for that. So, and that oh, so most of the open source contributors will give you solutions for that, how to fix that vulnerability. It's kind of, you know, give you those sort of details. So now we have, like, uh, got to know about uh, six different problems and six different solutions we know, uh, right? We, uh, everybody is clear so far? In any questions? I'll be happy to take. I'll just take a pause for two minutes if you wa have any questions or else we can continue. Yeah, I'm watching time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, quickly. So, if anybody don't have any questions, we'll move forward. So now, uh, so far it is clear for everyone, right? Six problems, six solutions, right? Now, to summarize, right, what we learned uh, till now. So we need a uh, uh, gatekeeper to get a compliance, right? Everything is uh, happening fine. And to do a secure, de secure deployments that nothing is breaking at the time of creating what you need kubesec. Uh, when you want to do <coughs> internal scan or IDS sort of thing, you need, uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, a cube hunter. These are our purposes, right? Now here is the surprise, right? So what is the surprise? There are no six tools, right? The, all these six tools which we talked about and we learned till now, all together in form of Minesweeper. So, 
if you get mind sweeper and you will get away with the problems till now what we have discussed it. again as it is coscop as it is kcd taiwan the tool i am talking about is a open source tool it's completely free for everyone you can uh, go ahead and check it out any time right so let's just uh, take a moment to explore what mindsweeper is right it, these are the standard things that you do in most of the presentations right this comes from this uh, bohem's principle called uh, w5hh right so i don't have seven questions but i uh, just uh, repeat uh, <coughs> sorted out to five questions what is mindsweeper like i said it's an open source tool and it will have a solution for all these six tools the six tools we integrated and we generated the random dashboards with the reports and everything we'll see demo in a couple of minutes but uh, yeah that is what mindsweeper is so why mindsweeper again so it is giving uh, uh, it is uh, getting away with a lot of the security issues which we have so when mindsweeper so uh, whenever right if you are running kubernetes cluster and if you are uh, now thoughtful about security yes you can start with mindsweeper how you can start with mindsweeper so mindsweeper we built in a such a way that everything is a helm chart how many of you heard about helm okay okay so helm is a package manager uh, manager with just one command when you have a kubernetes cluster ready with one command you will get the entire thing ready okay so that is what how we built it like using helm we built it how much like it will cost you nothing uh, when you are thinking about cost it just uh, you know needs your effort not your money okay because it's an open source so finally uh, we'll have a quick look up about demo so i think i might need just give me a second I think yeah, uh, I need to move a little bit. Yeah, that side a little bit. The complete screen. Ah, okay. So you need to move to another. Ah, sorry for the delay. Yeah, we'll. I think we can use mouse. This one, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll take over. Yeah. Okay, okay. Is it okay? Thank you. This one. No, it's already. Yeah, it's already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Need to start from the beginning. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Start. yeah. So, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, so, as in, uh, we talked about Minesweeper, right? Let's uh, see it in action, right? As soon as, uh, due to this uh, technical glitches on the Wi Fi and all, so I thought, uh, you know, audience uh, don't wanted to uh, miss this experience. So I created a video uh, on this same. So as soon as you log in, right, you, this kind of interface you'll get. Once you have this interface, right, uh, you can create multiple clusters. So uh, when you uh, on clicking on add cluster, and when uh, for this demo, I created a cluster called Minesweeper Dev. So it's a uh, basically Dev cluster. So in that, I can have a. Uh, uh, whatever the clusters right in this environment 
okay and uh, uh, apart from that it will give you a dashboards of complaint summary scans history and what are the uh, uh, historical report of the vulnerabilities everything so uh, then comes as soon as uh, when you click on that minesweeper dev right so it will uh, these are specific to this particular cluster so it has all the options which we had uh, talked about so summary is a overall summary about what are the images running and what are the vulnerabilities within the image and the stuff so then comes the cluster info so in cluster info you'll have uh, like uh, what are the cluster details everything will have and images will have like detailed scanning of the image like what are the uh, vulnerabilities and where it is sitting and all so next comes the gatekeeper we talked about right so a gatekeeper is something uh, like okay so here so uh, you can workloads right workloads is something like uh, uh, again the images based on the uh, namespaces so you can select different different namespaces and then and, uh, in that we'll have a different parts so gatekeeper like we talked about right? if you want to put some restriction on that whenever i need uh, i want to create a resource in kubernetes cluster uh, and uh, for example a pod which needs label uh, if you see down right so that is what i'm talking when i say kates required labels right when i try to create a pod without uh, specifying the uh, label it, it won't create because uh, i put that restriction right so that is what it will validate and it will stop me there hey you didn't provide any labels so uh, that is how we secure and kubesec we talked about it you can give an aml directly and you can or uh, and you can get a scan and get the reports or if you are already images running you can select based on the namespace right and can uh, and you can get the pod and you can run this kubesec for the validity and it will give you the score okay for this configuration what is the score i am getting so for now i am getting 7 which is a good score out of 10 right so, uh, so uh, similarly we have a cube hunter cube hunter also again uh, like we said right it's like a vulnerability assessment within the cluster so it will uh, uh, create you know vulnerability scan and it will generate the reports for you so next comes the uh, cube bench cube bench we talked right it's a basically cas benchmarks thing it will compare your cluster configuration with cube bench and it will give you the recommendations like what best you can do with your current configuration so, uh, so then comes the uh, falco uh, a wife or boyfriend or girlfriend or, uh, sort of stuff right it will notice each and everything which is happening so you can filter based on uh, you know the uh, error notice like you want only errors you want to notice everything so those kind of uh, things you can manage uh, using that uh, right so next comes the interesting part of reports right whatever we saw individual tool level if you want to get a uh, you know nicer view in terms of graphs and you know charts so you can get everything uh, in this report so you want how do you want to filter your errors based on uh, what are the running vulnerabilities so uh, that is the uh, thing about uh, uh, minesweeper so finally uh, i just uh, okay i'll come back to my presentation yeah i might need help so just pull it Okay, so yeah, so yeah, so that that is fine. Uh, everybody able to see, right? Yeah. Okay. So finally, I just wanted to give uh, some sort of uh, recommendation. So I'll take two minutes extra because <laughs> of the technical glitches we have. <laughs> but uh, so these are the generic practices like I, I figured out and based on the study which we are done, right? So whenever you uh, want to secure your Kubernetes uh, or any, uh, for that matter, if you want to secure anything, right? It's a shared responsibility between developers and operations, everything. 
when developers say like something uh, buggy uh, with your code as a devops engineer i am not uh, you know dealing with that that won't work because and uh, at the end it's a organization that is taking the uh, care of everything right it's a shared responsibility and uh, yeah you never expose your kubernetes api to uh, outside world that is a basic recommendation which we follow and uh, like let me simplify right uh, these are not uh, basic things so uh, like use tool called minesweeper it's not only minesweeper uh, uh, use uh, manage it tools that will make your life much easier i agree that you will have a limited control on the you know customization but when you find some tool uh, make use of it it will uh, make real sense and the references like uh, if you want to check it out uh, minesweeper uh, those are the website and uh, uh, we have a github repo and i have uh, uh, wrote clear documentation on how to install set up everything and uh, if you just uh, visit that you will get a detailed insight and the slide deck which we saw right now uh, will be there in that link and if you want to try minesweeper by your own and uh, your environment so you can get those uh, get started document there okay so at uh, the core team behind minesweeper like these are the co uh, two co founders of this open source project they wanted uh, you know uh, they are dealing with multiple clients and they wanted it to be you know very efficient later uh, you know they open sourced it uh, because they wanted uh, you know it to use by lot of other users like you and me right so that's why it's open source and uh, yeah i'm open for questions now uh, because uh, so i let yeah. me talk okay so uh let's uh thank you Cody bring our this uh wonderful session and uh, if you have any question, please feel free to contact Koti. Yeah, later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, I have brought like uh, I'm here for the discussion and all. The best three questions I get today will get three T-shirts from me. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Please start asking question later. Okay, and uh, the next session will start by uh, two fifteen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Please feel free to contact Cody.